Welcome to Nerd and the Noob, episode 20. New Kids on the Block joins Transformers. Hello, everybody! Hello, governors! Oh, sure. this is horrible. <laughs> this is this is starting out bad. <laughs> what you guys don't hear is every time I screw up the intro, it's bad. This <laughs> you should really put a blooper reel at the We'd end. We'd like to say that this episode is brought to you by apparently Perry the Platypus for all your platypus needs. <laughs> yes. So, how's everybody doing this weekend? It is a wonderful weekend. It is now what November the eleventh. Is it? It's been a long day. I'm, I'm sore. We were at the mall. We're going to jump thing. into the weekend explosion. Chat explosion. I'm sorry. I, I messed that up. I we got me and, uh, me and Gina got up this morning at like 6 o'clock. I went to bed at 9.30 last night. I'm old, guys. Let me just tell you. Apparently, I'm old. And so, I went to bed at 9.30. Woke up at 6 a.m. And we couldn't figure out what to do, but she wouldn't let me stream. Because we were going to do something. <laughs> so, <Shoot>. no. <laughs> um, so, we ended up getting up and uh, we were going to go get some Waffle House. And we were like, well, let's go to the mall. But it's like 8 in the morning. So, we didn't open until like 10, right? We didn't open until 11. So, we went to Waffle House, got some food, loved me some Waffle House. The lady forgot my extra bacon. Ugh. How can she look at you and forget I, extra bacon? I don't know. My, my, my arteries were going, I need more. Give me more. <laughs> and, um,. <laughs> And then we went to the mall. We got to the mall. Uh, actually, uber awesome parking. Like, second spot up front in a major mall. That <laughs> never happens. It does when you get there like five hours early. No, we got there at about 10.15. Uh, and it opened at 11. So, that was nice. And then we didn't leave there until 4 o'clock this afternoon. We were there all day. I bought uh, a lovely pair of the platypus whatever this thing is called. Some kind of... Toboggan? Toboggany thingy. Because Phineas and Ferb, Disney... I'm not sure what it is. Hey, maybe Phineas and Ferb will be in Star Wars. Um, that would be funny. <laughs> um, so yeah, I did that, and then we came... Uh, let's say we went to, like, David Buster's, watched a little football, got a steak. It was... Mm, um, <laughs> otherwise, that's about it. Like, I mean, it, it sounds like it wasn't a lot, but I'm hurting, because I walked. All damn day. I play video games too. I worked. He's boring. I worked a lot. He's really boring. I'm not boring. I'm 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 pulling the overtime. Anyway, so I'm guessing you're done with your weekend chat explosion. I'm thinking. Mm -hmm. Is that all I did? I think it's all you I did. I started I started listening to Ready Player One again. I haven't finished that book. They're giving you that book back, right? Yes. Okay. Someone else has already borrowed it. Guarantee they'll finish it. Who's that? Um, Robbie from work. Ah, cool. Uh, but yes, Ready Player One. If you haven't heard it, listen to it. If you haven't read it, read it. It's apparently a very good book. I read parts of it. It was good. I just don't like... It wasn't my style. So, alright. So, that's it for the Weekend Chat, chat Explosion brought to you by Perry the Platypus. Uh, we're going to move on to... The long box, and I'm gonna let you take the first story because you put it in there. Uh, basically, it's it's an article about Mark Millar and his uh, three to four year plan for Marvel movies. First of all, that's not long enough for Fox's Marvel movies. Fox's, which is what X Men, Fantastic, Fantastic Four, Four and Spider Man. No, Spider Man's owned by Sony. Oh, okay. So what, X Men and Fantastic Four? Yeah, and I'm assuming that they're going to do some other stuff. Wolverine is considered in that family, right? So what he's been brought in to do, and what everybody's been begging them to do, mm -hmm. is make it a coherent universe, okay. like the new Marvel movies are, right? You know, from Marvel Studios. It's so, a Marvel instead of a bunch of different worlds, right? So in this case, it's his job. To make foxes coherent, which I think still think is going to crap out, because yeah. I think Fox is going to have is going to push too much of their own and not let the Marvel creative people have enough to do with it. Right. See, I still complain that uh, that Brian Singer is going to be doing X Men: Days of Future Past, so I say on you completely, Sony, not Sony. Who is it? Fox. 
Fox should just let let Marvel have its stuff back so that they can do good. Sony should get rid of Spider-Man and let, you know, the good people do it. And then, yeah, I don't want to... I think what he's working towards is... I, if he stays, him and Joss Whedon, if they stay with the Marvel guys for a while. Okay. Wait, now, who is it? Mark Millar, he's a comic book guy, right? Yes. Joss Whedon's a comic book guy, too. He okay, yeah, yeah, I got that. We, we know Joss Whedon. Who is this guy? Uh, Daredevil, I think, and, uh, I mean, he's been around for a long time. I don't know his credits. I'm not, a, I'm not a Marvel guy. In fact, just, in, you know, up until recently, I wasn't even a you know, writer artist person. All right. I read the books. There are a few artists out there and a few writers that I follow now, but I mean I think what he's working towards is trying to get the universes to buddy up. Right. The Fox Marvel universe to buddy up with the Marvel Marvel universe. Right. And I think that would be great. Because then you could see Spider Man in the background of an Avengers movie going, Hey guys I doubt that's ever going to happen. Well, no, that but was, I would that's love Sony, that's Sony Marvel. Yeah, see that's see that's my problem is right now Marvel is too spread thin. I think they're trying to get everything back. That would be awesome. I really do. But now they're... with the whole thing with Star Wars, it, you know they've got. What do you think they're going to stop focusing on Marvel all of a sudden? Well, at, at, at... well, no, that's Disney though. Well, Disney owns Marvel. Yeah, true. I mean, Disney is the Monopoly guy right now. I mean, Disney's wearing the, the proverbial monocle going, hee 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 hee, do not pass go, give me all your money. <laughs> um, I don't know, I'm just I'm just curious what's going to happen to Marvel now that Disney's got a hold of Star Wars. Is it going to... Is it going to shift? Are they going to try to combine like anything? Or... Somebody in the chat said, Marvel Zombies would make an awesome movie. I've read... One of the books for Marvel Zombies, and I agree with you, but it would be so gross, <laughs> I don't think anyone would watch it. Have you watched The Walking Dead? Oh, dude, you just don't even... Blah. They eat Galactus. Cool. <laughs> dude, I'm down. <laughs> I don't even like zombies. Well, okay, it's, I don't know if I can say that anymore. You really can't. Just I don't. Like I like the story. I don't know that I still like... Don't. I don't know if I like zombies or not. Um... But, uh, why did we get off on this tangent? Uh, oh, chat. Okay, got it. Yeah, I, I would, uh, I don't know, zombies, zombies. <laughs> I got a movie. Marvel Zombies versus Disney Princesses. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but not Princess Leia is a princess now. Shit, but she's the only one uh, that, that could do anything. Pew Pew Laser? Pew Pew Laser. That's yeah. it. I want to see that. And the Disney princess. <laughs> that would be great. You could be so, like zombie apocalyptic princesses. <laughs> and you little, little twinkle at the end. That would be awesome. So weird of a tangent. Um, <laughs> Back to what we were talking about. Does the fact that they're trying to draw everything in to one universe attempting to do this after years of Well, the problem is, is right universes. now you've got, you've got three different companies that have to do that. You've got Disney that's got more, most of Marvel. You've got Fox that's got well, essentially the, the X-Men universe. universe and Fantastic Four, which they could eh, work into it if they wanted to. Um, and then you've got Sony that's got Spider-Man. I, I don't, Sony's not going to give up that power. No, uh, no, 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 no. Although I will say, you know, you always, we all, everyone always bitches and moans about the, the old X-Men movies. Mm -hmm. And especially number three, how crappy it oh, was. Oh, such a bad movie. However... Best character in all three movies was in that movie. Kelsey Grammer is Beast. Well, he was a good Beast, but I don't... Nah, it was a great Beast. For know. the older version of him. Okay, I was going to say, I liked the guy... The, me, the more, well, you know, not just educated, but, you know, worldly. Well, see, here's my thing. I, I, I'm spoiled now by the uh, X-Men, the new one. First Class. I absolutely, I think that should have been the cast. But I, I guess you're right. You can't have that cast as the older guys. No. Um. So I mean, I don't. I don't know. I'm. I'm Does it, is, is it a, is it a draw for you that he's pushing to make these worlds work together? Yes. I. If if he can do that, the problem with me is always the directors. Like, if they don't, or, or not even the directors, if they don't have the backing of a good script. 
uh, you know, I guess a solid director in it, then you can drop it. You could drop this these these X Men movies in the middle of a Thor movie, and if Brian Singer does it, it's still going to be crap. Uh, I don't know. So I, I don't know, uh, but I, still, I think I it's mean, great that they're going to they try be hiring him if he didn't have skill. I think other things worked against him, such as story and plot. He oh. can only he can only direct what he's given to direct. Right, but still, I'm sorry. A director at some point's got to go. No, no, that's crap. I'm not doing it, and get out. That's why. Who was supposed to do this? Matthew Vaughn. Matthew Vaughn. That's probably why. I, that that worries me. It's probably why he went. No, no. No, he's got another project I'm that he's out. working on. So and it took precedence over this. Brian Singer was already attached to it, I believe, in production. So I think that's why he went ahead and just decided to, you know. Right. I know. I don't know it. I think it's it's cool that they're going to try and bring try. Fox's Marvel Universe in more to the fold of Marvel, 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 Marvel. And not Sony. Marvel. I don't know that it's going to work because to me, X Men's always been a little bit more like gritty or dirty, uh, bloody, and the current Marvel stuff is not that way. Except for oh my god, the previews for Iron Man three <laughs> look amazing. Um, but you, it's not really that big of a bloody thing. And, uh, you know, I mean, especially with Wolverine, the guy slices people up. I mean, yeah. it, you can't just have him going <laughs> slicing walls all the time. So, I don't know. It, he stabs people. He stabs people. Yeah, Stab he, me! He, you know what always gets me is he stabs somebody with these three giant claws that are what? And it never goes Se- through the Seven back. inches, <laughs> seven to a foot, you know. No, not quite that long. Se- they're, they're pretty long. Seven, let's just say seven, eight inches long. And uh, when they when he pulls them out, it's like a clean wound. It's like, well, there's no razor blood. sharp. I don't care. It's not like they're hot. They're not the cauterizing not anything. Blow out like right away. Yes, it would. Yes, it would. It would blow out. And I hate you for the story. <laughs> All right. You go for it. Because this is this is your favorite segment. <laughs> Michael Bay does. Michael Bay does screw up my world. <laughs> Transformers 4. 4. 4. Gets funky with Mark Wahlberg and new promo image. Now, I give him credit. The, the image good. looks pretty neat. And for those of you that are watching this live, I am throwing a link in the chat so you can go look at the image. Um... So yeah, it's I, I like the image. They've got the, uh, a four, like they've got the uh, tr- is it that the Decepticon or Transformer? Decepticon. Uh, Decepticon. The Decepticon face cut oh, in God. half. Shut up. <laughs> With a four on the one left side and the Decepticon half on the other side. Which makes you think it's going to be Decepticon heavy. Well, it could be. Um, I it's it, but apparently here's the awesome part is they've got Mark Wahlberg is going to be the human element in this one. Uh, it's gonna the movie. I read something that's not in the article we put out. The movie is gonna be based four years after the end of the last movie. Okay, now I, I have so a you couple think of they're questions. Gonna pretend he's Shia LaBeouf but older. God, I hope Shia not. LaBeouf. Uh, I, I have a couple of questions though. First off, I will admit I like Mark Wahlberg. Yeah. Almost everything I've seen him in, even the Planet of the Apes movie, I've liked. Sadly enough. Uh, so uh, I'll give I'll give him credit for that. Um, no one cares that Mark's going to be in it. Everyone just wants to know what pair of butt cheeks is going to be in this one. Mm, Sophia Vergara. <laughs> That's what I'd like to see in it. <laughs> I don't know what is wrong with me today. Um, but yeah, so apparently four years after the Chicago thing. Now here's what I want to know: is is it is he going to treat it like? No, apparently this one's getting... I, I can't imagine they're going to take Optimus out of this, but it's been announced it's all new cast, human element, and robot element. So why didn't because he call Megatron's this... Because Megatron's dead. Why didn't he call this Beast Wars? Because that's probably what it's going to turn into. Ooh, that would be cool. <laughs> <laughs> I would, or what was the other I would one? go see Beast Wars. Who's with me? Who would go see Beast Wars? What was the other one? There was uh, the, not Transformers. 
There was another one. Gobots. 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 I want that <laughs> movie. <laughs> that was the Kmart of, of Transformers. God, it was so bad. But it was so good. I, <laughs> I love go the Gobots. I, that's why he's finishing uh, Transformers, because he's going to go from Transformers to Beast Wars. <laughs> Um, let's see. So apparently he, Mark, um, I'm sorry, Michael Bay is using his website to officially say, uh, Mark is awesome. Uh, apparently they've just worked on a movie called Pain and Gain. With, oh, sorry. Elbow in your with, face. Um, Dwayne Johnson, I believe is the other guy in that movie. Um, the news was accompanied by a new graphic tease posted above, which will, and it says it'll be in theaters June 27th of 2014. Six months, months away? 14. What year is this? Twelve. Oh crap! Okay, go ahead. <laughs> uh, now there were servers out there that the internet got Mark Wahlberg hired. That's what I heard. I was reading some of this earlier, and it said that uh, the rumors were that Mark Wahlberg was in the fourth movie, and apparently Michael Bay liked that and went and asked him if he wanted to be in the fourth movie. But here's the thing, though: Do you think more people like this? The idea of no Shia LaBeouf in the movie. I like Shia LaBeouf. I do too. What is wrong with people? I do too. I like Shia LaBeouf. But I'm saying there are a lot of people out there. I have friends who hate Shia LaBeouf. Do I think he was a good actor in Indiana Jones? Not necessarily. Do I think he was bad? Indiana Jones was good all the way until the aliens. All the way until the aliens. Okay, all the way until the aliens. I'll give him credit. And then you ruin the whole movie. Uh, Yes, and then we could kill you, Spielberg. If I find you in a dark street, I'm going to hit you. With an Indiana Jones poster. Because we know Spielberg's listening. Over and over and over again. It's probably got... Uh, it's probably going to be like... A, oh, no, sorry. That was mixing him and Lucas. I was going to say, it's probably going to be a poster of Han shot first. <laughs> so, anyways. So, uh, so I mean, what do you think? Who, who would you make as the girl otherwise... Uh, besides Vagara? A better question. Better question. What would you what would you do? Like, would you just Transformers the Beast Wars? No, they keep saying it's going to be a new crew. Uh-huh. I'm kind of hoping for the '80s movie. Oh God, I haven't seen the '85 so movie. You know uh-huh. where? Uh, I think I tried to watch where that. they ended up with like the hot rod guy who turned into a big rig at the end of the movie because he got the the uh, the the dang with the spark, the all spark. With yeah, the, thing the all and spark. The chest okay, and all yeah, that gotcha. Uh, so I could totally see that. I think it uh, goes back only to a story. If, only if they use the '80s soundtrack. <laughs> kind of goes back to a story we were talking about a couple of weeks ago, where the big reason they're wanting to kill off some of these t- characters to make is because the toys aren't selling. And that pisses me off to no end because I know Mattel owns this 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 ran- franchise. Mattel was the original, or but. I think so. It's a movie that makes billions of dollars. Please, dear God, just let them make the movie. I mean, it's not that hard. I'm just, I'm, my mind gets blown when they're like, we're going to kill off all your characters because the toys aren't selling. That's what the, that, I imagine that's what all the executives sound like. Your stuff is just, it's not working for us. Okay, I'm sorry. Go really? Because I thought they all talked like me. <laughs> I get Um... It's their, it's their line. I mean, it's it's their stuff. Well, see, okay, now here's the other but problem I got with this. You know, he changed a bunch of them. The what? It, uh, here, here, again, here's on, the other on, thing on I get Ron, this. I can't, if on if they they're gonna kill all these guys and bring in new Not ones, I think they, for one movie. No, I think someone else is gonna continue. I think some Michael Bay might actually find a successor, and they'll do another two movies. So he can go and destroy Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. He'll produce this. He won't direct. He won't direct the rest of them. I think he would produce them. Right. But in the old movie, the Omnicron, God forgive me, I cannot remember his name. He changes a lot of them because they're all injured and everything else. You know, he turns. Uh, he turns um, Megatron into Galvatron, who ends up sounding a lot like Leonard Nimoy. Um, <laughs> Which has already been oh, done. Oh, speaking of that, we should really... We need some news about the next Star Trek movie. Okay, go ahead. I got some... I mean, there was some on Conan a while back. I hate you. Why haven't we talked about that? Because it was it was a, a half a second clip of uh, Spock oh, yes. standing in fire. Hey, hey, hey. <laughs> I'm cool with that. I'm cool with that. Um, so, I, I mean, yes or no, Mark Wahlberg, good. Yeah, I'll totally... Mark Wahlberg is just shy of an action hero. How do you get just shy... Arnold Schwarzenegger 
might have been an action hero. But he not. But he long. just shy of a diaper. <laughs> No, I think Mark Wahlberg is just shy of a true action hero because he doesn't just do that stuff. You know, um, uh, Stallone, just all he does is action movies. I mean, every dude in The Expendables, action heroes. Right. Mark Wahlberg, not necessarily an action hero. You know what would be great if, like, in the middle of a movie, like, a song comes out on in the radio and he just starts, like, doing the uh, the moonwalk? Oh, oh, oh. <laughs> Uh oh uh, oh! Quick, <laughs> sorry. Wouldn't that be awesome though? It's like, let's think about no, it. Ted. No, what'd be funnier is that they were doing the walk across like the screen, like it's on the TV in the background behind them. Yeah. It's like, don't I recognize you? No. No, no. <laughs> no, wouldn't it be great if, like, in the next Ted movie, if they make another Ted they're movie, going to. Uh, you know, like they're in, they're somewhere and the radio comes on, he just gets up and goes, I don't know why, but I just. I feel like I gotta dance to this. And he just he just dancing around with it, doing the moves. That, Is that not the right stuff? That would be awesome. Okay, so we're gonna move on to the next story. Today's episode is brought to you by the letter T for tangent. Tangent, tangent. That's a good word there. Have you been looking at your calendar a day thing? Uh, it's, you know, calendar it's on, a day. It's what on the toilet calendar? paper, so I get okay. a bunch of them. At All right, so you read this one. I'll let you have at it. Uh. Some spoiler alerts that could be plot points in Iron Man 3. Now, granted, I've been trying to avoid most of the stuff for, for Iron Man 3, but I've been calling this from day one. Okay. From Iron Man 1, I have been calling this because it was a cool storyline in the comic. You see the, the preview where Tony and Pepper get blown back and all the debris and stuff, right? Right. In the comics, Pepper Potts gets injured... To the point to where she can no longer function on her own, and Tony puts her in a suit. Okay. She actually, I think she has to live in the suit for a while. Like, she is, it is her lung, you know? Right. And granted, I'm sure they wouldn't do that in the movie, because that's just a fantastic butt to cover up. It's okay. I love it. Um, But she becomes, in the, in the comic books for a while, she becomes a hero called Rescue. Okay. Never really big on the name, but I love the fact that they did that. That they took someone and made them into a hero, but out of out of tragedy. You know. Oh yeah, because that's never happened. Not for Pepper. <laughs> she marries Happy Hogan. Oh okay. Sorry, you totally lost me there for a second. Go ahead. Continue. Um. But my thing is, is do you think that would be too many, too many Iron Mans? Nope, not at all. I don't think so. And apparently, she's not going to die in the movie. No, I, I no, I don't. At least we don't think she's going to die because there's still thought she might be in Avengers two. Right. I think it would be cool to bring her in as rescue on Avengers two. Apparently, the, according to some of these rumors, she's getting a suit in the third one. I'm telling you, it it's it's happening, and I called this years ago. That would be awesome. Dude, I would love to see like a poster for Iron Man 3 of Iron Man, War Machine, Rescue. Iron Patriot. Who's that? War Machine. Okay, Iron Patriot. In this movie, anyway. You know, all those Iron things. Patriot in the comic books is Harry Osborn. Uh, really? It's a com- It's supposed to be his combination of, and when he takes control of the Avengers, it's his combination of Captain America oh, and Iron Man. Oh, oh, oh. What? Harry Osborn? Not Harry. Um, um, Norman? Norman. Thank you. He's the Green Goblin. Sorry. Yes. Oh, my brain just exploded a little bit. What? <laughs> Somebody find the Wikipedia page Walk me for through that. this. Um, at one point, all the Avengers get taken out and they get in it. And the Thunderbolts, who is a team of reformed bad guys, comes in and either takes the place of or impersonates the Avengers. In this case the place of Captain America and Iron Man becomes Iron Patriot. Okay. Which is Norman or Norman Osborn. Uh, somebody comes in. Uh, Bullseye comes in as Hawkeye. Uh, oh, booger. Did somebody send it in? Okay. No, I'm sorry. Trick Shot. Trick Shot comes in as Hawkeye. Scar comes in as Hulk. Um, let's see here. Decapitator as Spider-Man. What? Okay, there's another one. Bullseye is Hawkeye. Uh, Moonstone is Miss Marvel. Uh, Venom comes in as Spider-Man. 
Dakin comes in as Wolverine. My mind just blew up. I must read these. Uh, it was apparently a really cool series. Um, I must read these. I, again, have not got to read it. That's epic. So, uh, we totally got, again, off tangent on this. Not necessarily. Um, apparently, and see, this pisses me off. Why? The last thing, last two words of this article is toy design. So, like, the big reason... No, no, I think this is coming from the fact that maybe toy designs are being released, and that's where people are thinking this is happening. I don't know. I, I think fantastic they're... fantastic video here. Yeah, shut up. Ah, I think they're making her into this because they wanted another toy. Oh, I'm sure, dude. It's it's all. I, what did the great yogurt say? I have no idea. I can't. Merchandising. Not. Oh Jesus! <laughs> the great yogurt. <laughs> yeah. No, no, just plain yogurt. <laughs> You're killing me. <laughs> You're killing me. Oh my God! Really, really? That's that's what you're gonna go with? Just plain yogurt? So, all right, that's, okay, so, all right, so I'll bring up my one talking point for this story. If you could see anybody in the Marvel Universe in an Iron Man suit, who would it be? I'm sorry, I want to see, no, I want to see the Dark Avengers, which would be Norman Osborn in the suit. Okay, see, me, I want to see Spider-Man in a suit. Do you want to see the Iron Spider suit? Sure. That's also been done. Damn it! It's like the Simpsons during um, um, uh, Secret War? Civil War. Civil War. Civil War. He was get, he was made a new suit of armor by Tony. I should really read more comics. You probably should. I mean, you can buy trades very cheap out there. <laughs> Cheaptrades.com, I think. Um. Cool. All right. Well, that's it for the long box. Is it for the long box? That's it for the long box. That's it for the long box. Oh, that was good stories. Yes. A lot of tangents. <laughs> so someone just said in, in our chat, the Hulk in an Iron Man suit. <laughs> My God! No, but you do have Iron Man Hulk suit. It's, yes, it's the Hulk Buster. Oh, okay. I Can you imagine that one. being in that suit though? At some point, you're not controlling the arms anymore. You're just in a little cockpit going. <laughs> <laughs> it's so big. Um. Awesome. All right. So, next, we're going to move on to the comic of the week. This week, it was Detective Comics, number 14, called Unnatural Selection. From the new DC I've, I'll admit, I've never read a Detective Comics. Nor have I. I've read DC Comics, but not Batman Detective Comics. Now, even just from the cover alone, the artwork was great. Oh, the artwork was freaking awesome. Uh, and the art was by Andy Clark and Jason Fabek. Fabek. Um, and you said specifically you liked the uh, the Poison Ivy? The Poison Ivy in this one I really like. Okay, so I guess I'm going to lose a point on my man card because for the last <laughs> several years, everyone's always seen the Poison Ivy with nothing but plants. <laughs> I like it. I'm not saying that it does not give me a good comic wood. <laughs> Somebody please make that into a <laughs> soundboard. I want him saying a good comic wood. Really? On, uh, on a soundboard? If we're going to do that, we got to talk about your infatuation with Jessica Rabbit. Okay. Fair enough. Go ahead. <laughs> anyway, however, the, they give her a suit in this one. And it just has plants on it. But she has a full-length bodysuit. I didn't know she was in Birds of Prey. Up to this point in the new, D, new DC 52, she was in Birds of Prey. Apparently, they had a falling out. I did not I mean, know. Let's face it, that, that was a good show. That, did you watch that show? I have it on DVD. That was a good show. It was a good show. We have a, we have a vested interest in that show, though. Alfred? I'm sorry. With yes, Ian. continue. Sorry. Um, um, when is this? Somebody's asking in chat, when is this out? This comic is out now. Yeah, and we don't read anything unless it's already out. We don't get pre-orders and stuff. No, no, we're not that cool. I, well, I am that cool, but he throws down my street cred. So, <laughs> um, uh, anyway, the story starts out with a slashing blade that says, "Go for it." Foosh, foosh, foosh. I say foosh, foosh. That would be an A, though. Well, but otherwise, it just sounds like foosh. foosh. Well, because you don't get enough of the f, 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 whoosh. All right, we'll go with foosh. Anyway, it starts out with a what appears to be a flame sword ninja attack. 
on a benefit party that Bruce Wayne and um, the Penguin are attending. Yeah. Um, I like the art. Like, the faces in this. A lot of times, I have my complaint is always with the faces. And the faces in this are pretty awesome. Yeah. I mean, that's all you get of Bruce Wayne. Yeah, you get a little bit more Bruce Wayne. I did forget that in the new D- DC 52 that the current Robin, the first Robin in this, uh, you know, according to this, well, is Damien. Damien Wayne, who is the son of Bruce. And I'm assuming it's Talia in this one. Is his mother. Oh, okay. I'm assuming that is still the case. We don't know. I don't really know. I have not read a lot of this because... Again, it's our first one. I'm poor. Anyway, uh, the 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 rest of the issue, other than the Penguin at the beginning, basically is a big feature on Batman and Poison Ivy. Again, she was a eh, good guy Ish. up to this point. Um, there is a really creepy shot of her trying to control Batman with you know the pheromone kiss and everything, and in his mind. He sees like this giant stack of vegetation with lips and glowing eyes, and it's very creepy. It is a little creepy. But the story was good. It progressed really well. It has to do with him trying to bring her back from the that side. I think what I like a lot about this is we try not to do too many spoilers. So, I, I, what I like a lot about this though is the dialogue between Damien and Bruce. Yeah, because they, it's like it's like mini mini Bruce. It's father son. It's mini Bruce. So like you know when he's. Blah 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 hoity toity. Then Damien comes back blah, 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 hoity toity. You know, I imagine that's how they sound. Um, is that how they sound in your head? Yes. Actually it is. Okay, because I still hear Kevin Conroy in my head. I you watched way too much Batman. <laughs> so, um but yeah, so I, I think it's that's probably the coolest part to me is he's like well, what if we did it this way? No, why would we, we do it we that might, way? We've sw- ba- switched back and forth on our comics. Sometimes, some weeks, both things are good. Some th- weeks, uh, both things are crap. This week, the art drew me in. Yeah. It was very clean, very nice, and just overall, it helped tell the story fairly well, in my opinion. I got the story. You know, the word bubbles, everything else. Something that they don't do a lot in comics anymore is when they <laughs> reference something, there was a... Um, you know, there was a little box that said, this happened here. <laughs> Mike. Mike yelled at us a lot, going, hey, go back and check this one. Hey, go back and check this one. It was good. I, I, the art was good. The story wasn't great, but it was good. Yeah. I, I've seen better stories in the last few weeks. True. We have. Um, but it was a pretty decent story. Um, there's Again, some, the art really yeah, pulled, the art really is, is what the big thing is like if you if you read a lot of comics for the art uh, it's it's really you really also good. get a good surprise at the end of it and there's a backup story yeah there's uh, a backstory at the end um, art's not as strong for the backup story yeah, I don't know why Be, well they don't all, <laughs> some of these artists they they're doing maybe two or three books books a month right but to look at how much detail is in this yeah I don't know I it just the backstory comic, it's called uh, Poison Ivy and Seeds and Dirt. Um, it's, let's see, it's written by completely, oh wait, it's written, it's written by, by John Lennon. same guy, art by the, the same by, guy. No, the art in the front half of the book is by Jason Fabok. The yeah. art in the back half of the book is Andy Clark. Yeah, well, whatever. The um, writer, yeah, the writer did the art, did the, the story. Writers, there's a lot of writers out there. Jeff Johns, I think he's got ten books out there. Mm. He writes the Green Lantern stuff. He's got that one over there. So I mean, right? Like I said, art was really cool. Uh, there was a cool little Easter egg if you looked. Um, uh, it, the the backup is features Poison Ivy going back to uh, Arkham, and there is a shot of um, Lieutenant Cash. And for those who played the Arkham uh, Arkham See. Asylum games, Cash was in that. Hmm, nice. and so that was kind of cool I remember Cash I, for some reason I remember that character I never even beat the game right because I just didn't have the patience and Joker's hard <laughs> Joker's hard Joker's hard I Joker think moves. beat him um, but uh, all in all I'll give this out of five I'd probably give this about a three I mean it's kind of mid range no, I'll give it a four for me because the, the art was good but the story didn't just drag me in no I liked I liked all of it I'll give it a, I'll give it a, a low four Okay. All right. I'll take that. I'll take a low four any day. We will lowball that to death. 
<laughs> um, let's see. So that brings us to the next segment called New Verses. Last week we got no votes because we bombed. We went obscure, too obscure. He picked the Green Lantern Planet thing. What's his name? Mogo. Mogo. And who did I pick? Galactus. Galactus. I picked Galactus. He went to Obscura, which totally screwed up mine. <laughs> so, um, I decided to go mainstream this week. Alright, so, in other words, we didn't get any votes, so no winner, no loser. The fans won, because they told us stop doing stupid ones. <laughs> <laughs> go ahead. This week, Captain America. Really? Captain America. A Marcia. <laughs> Alright, so Captain America... Hmm. You're not allowed to use Red Skull because then I can just bring comics out where, show, where it shows who wins where. Okay, okay. Captain America versus... Oh, wait, 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 wait. What's that comic that's going on right now? There's about a billion. AVX? Okay. Or no, what was the other one? Um, what are you talking about? Versus, I'm versus... Heard. I'm down for it. So, on the suggestion of that Alice in our chat, it's going to be Captain America versus... Homer J. Simpson. You're just not even trying anymore, are you? Let me okay, let me say it this way. The Simpsons have been around for twenty years. Okay. Captain America's been around since World War II. Right. But Captain America has died and stayed that way. Homer comes back every week. Homer, I pa, uh, pa, uh, I, I postulate. I, yeah, that'll work. I postulate that Homer is a uh, invincible. is invincible or immortal. Sure, that'll work too. Or he can't be killed. I don't. I don't actually know how to. I don't. What is wrong with you? Ooh, and he's got aggressive choking powers. <laughs> That's what I'm going for. I'm going for Captain America versus Homer J. Simpson. That's just weird. Oh, that's that's awesome. Right there. I'm having so much fun. That is... Oh, look, we have a creeper. <sighs> I can't believe you would ruin my good one with Homer J. Simpson. You're getting me back for last week is what you're doing. <laughs> Thanks, Alice. <laughs> Thanks a lot. All right. Oh my God, that's hilarious. I have not. We've not had a good funny one in a while. All right. So moving on, we're gonna. Uh, after that, we move on to what we call the short box. Short box is just little kind of one-offs we throw out there for uh, everybody to look at or kind of go inspect for themselves. So, but we we'll talk about them for a couple of minutes each. So this one's you because you had uh, notes on um, it. This one goes off a rant that I've been having for probably the last year. Uh, Vertigo's Hellblazer is going to con conclude after 25 years with issue number 300. And I've never read it. I know it, it's based around Constantine, Constantine, however you want to say it. Um, my problem with this is it's still ushering in the death of the long comic. Right. The extended story, the the comic with history. Right. This comic alone has twenty five years of its own history, not counting at the places the other the character has been. Right. And you know, DC DC Universe that's been rebooted. There is no longer any old continuity. You know, it didn't happen. Hmm. Uh, Marvel is cutting off issues. You know, Spider Man. Spider Man. 700 issues. I feel sad. I just, I, when we were kids, I said this earlier, you couldn't find a comic in the teens, 20s, or 30s. It, if it wasn't in the 50s or the 100s, then we didn't read it because it wasn't out there. Right. Because every, you know, yes, they still changed. Like when people. I was a kid, I think every comic we bought was like number 132. Yeah. But, I mean, on top of that, it was, yes, you know, sometimes these comics change because the guy wants to come in and write a new story. Right. Completely new. Okay, reboot it in the story somewhere. Figure out a way to have... They can't have time traveling in every story. Uh, yes, they can. No, they can't. Yes, they can. Because it turns into Captain America. <laughs> or the X-Men. My cousin is trying to kill me for that, by the way. I may die next weekend when he meets me. 
So, uh, we'll let you read the article. It's uh, it's a pretty lengthy article. I'm, it's got I'm some really nice art I'm to it. I'm go ahead and do a, a midweek issue on the death of the long comic. All right, you go for it. All right, so the next one is DC Digital Comic Sales see nearly 200% bump compared to last year. And I can see why. All this means is that hopefully more people are reading comics and the medium's not going to die. Yes, well, that's what it seems to be. Well, the fact that every that they're doing them digitally now... Uh, I mean, because this is the digital age. That's that's the bad part about it. Like, I love. I'm still one of those guys. Like, when it comes to books, I buy books. I have books all in my office. I love books. True. Um, you know, but when it comes to comic books, do I want to go to the com- Do I want to go to the store every week and buy fifteen dollars worth of comic books? No. I'd rather get them for you know a little bit cheaper on the computer. Buy them, read them, done. Yeah, don't worry about no, it. No, see. I'll read them digitally. You know, I I've got a little tablet. I plan on getting a bigger one in the future, um, but I, I still prefer going into the shop. Like when there was a comic book shop within a half mi- you know a half hour drive to my house, I was there every Wednesday for new comics, and then I hang there for like five six hours. <laughs> I'm not even kidding. I got to know the owners really well. Right. And it was it's nice. It's it's an atmosphere. But you know, you also you someone sitting there on a on a park bench reading, you don't know what they're reading. It went back in the day, kids sat on the front stoop of, you know, their apartment buildings and all you know, they'd all read a comic and they go, I'm done and then someone else would read the you know, and then you'd right. switch. There isn't that anymore. Right. And you know, yeah, I'm glad that the digital thing is working because well, see, that's the thing. I, see, I'm also one of those ones. Uh, if we get a digital one and it's really good, like here's a prime example. Uh, what about two months ago we got the Green Lantern uh, New Fifty Two Zero? Yeah. Um, I fell in absolute love with that story, and I just happened to be at the bookstore last week and I saw that one on the shelf and I bought it, even though we'd already bought it once. Means you can go back and buy it again if you or read it again if you'd like to. Exactly. I've got it actually now. It's in a frame because I think it's a really good. I don't know why I think that's a good... Please go read that one. <laughs> it's a fantastic book. I don't know how many weeks I have to say that. If you haven't read it yet, what's wrong with you? All right, so, um, in other words, uh, apparently apparently DC's bump is... Um, new 52 this year. The new 52. That's, a, that's the big one for it. I, I imagine out of the new 52, probably half of them will probably stay running. Nah, not even that. Uh, I mean, because they've changed a lot of the stories already. Right. Well, I'm just saying. So Look for this, you, you, this makes you. Good. <laughs> um, okay, so apparently nobody wants to direct the new Star Wars movie. Uh, Steven Spielberg says that uh, no, no, it's not my genre. It's my best friend George's genre. I'm gonna let him do it. Zack Snyder has said no. Zack Snyder did, is doing Man of Steel and has done Watchmen. Uh, and Quentin Tarantino said, I could care so less, especially if Disney's going to do it. I'm not interested in the Simon West version of Star Wars. Uh, so, yeah, apparently nobody wants to do this. Who was the third one? We oh, we, we said the third one. Okay. There's it, There have been more out there that have said they don't want to do it. There's a couple out there that, have said, that haven't said they don't want to do it. So, yeah, it, but apparently nobody wants to direct the new Star Wars movie. But they did get... A writer, someone who's going to do a 50-page treatment on it, Michael Arndt. He did Toy Story 3, won an Oscar for it. Uh, or won an Oscar for Little Miss Sunshine, actually, I think. Okay. But he also wrote a lot to Toy Story 3. And I was like, I love that movie. Yeah, good movie. But, I mean, you know, that doesn't necessarily mean it's going to be Toy Stories in space. <laughs> Who would you like to direct it? You know, I don't know. A fresh face is fine. I'm more concerned about the story than I am the director on this. I don't want Spielberg to do it anyway. No, I didn't want Spielberg. I don't want Lucas to do it because he'll screw it up. Lucas isn't doing it. I know. I'm just saying. I'm trying to. I'm throwing out some names out there. J.J. Abrams. J.J. Abrams. That would be the one I'd go. Does it, would that would would that cause an issue since he's doing Star Trek? It might cause some kind of wormhole puncture <laughs> in the universe. He'd be like. Wait, wait, wait! Your name's Luke. I, I thought you were Kirk. I, oh God, this is confusing. <laughs> uh, that, uh, I, see, there's something like, I've heard. Matthew Vaughn dropped out of X Men so he could go do Star Wars. Nah, I've heard that rumor. That would be cool. I'd still like to see J J Abrams, but then again, I'm a big fan of his camera shake <laughs> with little lights on it. 
point some lights at it to give it the little... That's the Star Trek thing. Yeah, I know. I've seen it. Um, but, uh, yeah, I mean, Matthew Vaughn would be fine. Again, he's done one movie that I, could, that I can think of that I've seen. Yeah. X-Men. Yes. Good movie. Yes. I'm, I'm happy to see him... I'm happy to see his movies until he fails. They all inevitably fail. Michael Bay. <laughs> Anyways... So yeah, um, Peter cool Jackson little story. Likes epic trilogy. Yeah, but all of his gotta be in the Shire. <laughs> um, or or who's the comic book total nerd? What's his name? Kevin, Kevin Smith. Yeah, he can do it. You know, I don't know if he could do that objectively. He could. Do I it. think he said no. He could do it. I think Kevin Smith has said no. I didn't read any of this. I I, I thought it was cool, so I put it in here. Um, the Amazing Spider-Man Blu-ray has hidden Amazing Spider-Man 2 hints. I'm not going to read anything about this because we want you guys to go to the to the uh, the link the links and check it out. But considering there's people live in here, I will at least give them this command this link so they can go look at it now. Which means now you have to go look at it later. Apparently, it's what it says it is. There's some Easter eggs hidden in the new Blu-ray for the next movie. Hang on, hang on, I just want to... No, well, uh, no, you can't read it with the... There's a scene where Gwen is in the Oscorp lab giving a tour to a series of students and there could be an Easter egg in there. Okay. That's going to aggravate me because now i got to go buy the Blu-ray. Oh, I was going to buy it anyways. So I can sit there for the first 45 minutes and go, it happened in the first one, opposite of the first one, opposite of the first one. Oh, you just... No, it was a good movie. I liked the movie after the first 45 minutes. At once he got to the point of being Spider Man, good movie. No, I liked the build up because he, you know, the the web mistakes and all that stuff. So, all right, moving on. Did that. Uh, okay, you did that. Iron Man three. Did we do this? Spoilers. There's some more spoilers. Let's see what those spoilers are. Whoop. <laughs> That's a cool shot. No, I like it. Uh, apparently, it's typical of sign that you're on a pretty big scope. When a studio asks you to remove a story, that's what happened to Brazilian entertainment site Omelette, which reported comments made by Simon Phillips, president of Marvel Entertainment International and Consumer Products, about Iron Man 3 during a presentation in Sao Paulo. Sao Paulo. Um, there's some potential spoilers. According to Omni, Tony Stark will have an underground hall of armors with somewhere around 16 new suits. That reminds me of the, uh, the cartoon movie. Yeah. Um, let's see. Including some classics that fans will recognize from the comics. Uh, it's also reported Pepper Potts will don her own suit. So we saw that. Um, where's this also oh, added, there you go. Right there. Uh, the report adds that the scene in the Iron Man 3 trailer where Tony Stark is lying on a hospital bed is actually when he's injected with the extremist virus. Yes! Uh, because of that injection, Tony will be able to create new armors from leftover pieces of older ones. I can't wait till he gets to the part where he just like melts the armor off uh, out uh, you know out I don't of, think that's how they're going to do it no I think they're gonna have it like you know they say hall like he something's gonna happen they're all gonna get busted and he's gonna be down there and he's just gonna concentrate and different pieces are gonna start popping and then like he's gonna be shooting with the gun and it's gonna run out so he's gonna drop it and he's gonna grab you know another one's gonna connect to his suit that's gonna be epic <laughs> I want to see that I can't. That I, I. This movie, honestly, Iron Man three is probably going to be the best movie in five years. I mean, Avengers was good, but the the stuff they've got going into this is amazing. Now, see, I have I have a problem seeing past twenty fifteen at this moment. <laughs> what and when is it, this one's coming out next year, right? Uh, yeah. Iron Man three is it next May year 3rd. or the year after? May third. See. Awesome. So, guys, go look at that article. Uh, it's got some more stuff on it that we didn't talk about. Otherwise, if we talked about it all, what would be the point? All right, you were talking about this one. I thought this was cool. For Hobbit fans out there, there is a uh, Bleeding Cool has got a list of every cinema where you can see the Hobbit in the 48 frames per second HFR. I don't know what HFR means, but I do do know that it's the higher resolution higher frame rate that's what hfr is <laughs> um it's the super super high frame rate there's a full list here it's going to be in Let's several see, states, cities states states i was trying to see if there's like any other like are there any nearest countries nope. that it has uh does it have countries on it uh, there's one near us yep not close enough 
What is that? Oh, that's California. Yeah. There's a crap ton in California. Uh, let's just hit page down here. I'm tired of looking. Uh, Canada's getting a couple. Melbourne? Melbourne. Winnipeg. I think that's Australia. Yes. Um, so, I mean, there's going to be some. If you like that, I don't really care. I Honestly, and you can guys can stab me later. I've never really cared for all that. The Hobbit and... The Lord of the Rings stuff. I just, it just, I was more the Harry Potter guy. Still, it might be cool to go see this in a in a hyper frame rate, you know. So, and we've got one last thing, and this is not even a story, and this is for those that enjoy the ladies. So, if any of you who are over the age of say what twenty, fifteen, uh, you got to be old. yeah, I'd say um, about twenty three. There was a movie a few, a couple, a lot of movies a while back called uh, Spy Kids, and it had uh, Alexa Vega in it. And she was the sister. Yes, she was the sister in Spy Kids, and the picture that she that's got that they've put out of her for in Machete Kills. There's no little girl left. She is. Oh my God. I, what, did, what did I name it? Alexa Vega from Spy Kid to Killer Babe. I saw this at work and had to calm myself because I started to freak out in the middle of work with a bunch of people around me. <laughs> Yeah, this was... Uh, As Philip DeFranco would say, sexy time news. Sexy time news. <laughs> this is some 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 sexiness. This is... I, I put the link in the chat, and my chat is going, wow, oh my god, damn. That's <laughs> how so you get a big old... You, can I get a big old glass of damn with that? Uh, so yeah, this isn't even a story. Uh, apparently there's another picture of her out there on her Twitter... Um, yeah, so I may actually go watch this movie, <laughs> and I don't even like these movies. No. I'm, I'm not a big fan of these, but I may watch this. <laughs> so on that note, guys, um, oh, hey, we got it in under an hour. Oh my God. I thought it was going to be a short show. Um, guys, thank you for watching the show this week or listening to the show this week or whatever you do with the show this week. They transpose it to... Um, did you uh, read that Alex's thing? No. Um, I'll show, we'll talk about it in a minute. Uh, otherwise, guys, uh, thanks for coming. If you're watching it live, thanks for listening if you're listening to it after the fact. And um, I guess we will see you next week. If you need to get in contact with us, you can email us at nerdinthenoob at gmail.com or on Twitter, we are at nerdinthenoob, at gman0184, and at opaque underscore mango. Yep. We are on YouTube, iTunes, Android, Twitch, Twitter, everywhere we could possibly think of other than Facebook because I believe it is dying. If there's not, if there's somewhere that we're not that you have found and you need us to be there, then email G-Man because he does all the, the distributing. At Nerd in the Noob. So, guys, thanks for coming to the show. We'll see you next time. Stay epic. Peace. Out. I hate you. <laughs>